welcome everyone to our panel discussion with the Visual Voices Artist Board. We are so excited to be gathered together today to share some insights into how we developed the first ever traveling exhibit of Chickasaw contemporary art. The Chickasaw Nation is a sovereign indigenous nation. Our homelands are in Mississippi, Tennessee, Alabama, and our nation now sits in South Central Oklahoma. We have citizens that live all over the country as well as on our reservation. And this exhibit is on view right now at the Briscoe Museum and features nearly 60 pieces from 15 contemporary Chickasaw artists working in diverse mediums including textiles, metalwork, painting, photography, clay, sculpture, and much more. All of these artists are utilizing diverse styles and techniques that speak to their unique connection to their culture. And I would like everyone to introduce ourselves. Um, and I'll go first. My name is Kristen Dorsey, and I am a citizen of the Chickasaw Nation. And I have worked um, over a decade in metals um, and primarily adornment, uh, studying our Chickasaw adornment traditions and incorporating them into contemporary fine jewelry. And I am also a sculptor working in metal um, sculpture. Um, Margaret, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. My name is um, Margaret Roach Wheeler. I am a textile artist um, for about the last 40 years and mainly a weaver. And I am Chickasaw and um, have been working with the tribe as an artist in residence for about 14 or 15 years and, um, and have done quite a bit of changing with my style. I started um, molding the woven fabric, and so the pieces that are in the exhibit um, are, are all, except for one, um, they're hand cast, hand woven, and so it is, it is a direction that I've taken probably in the last 10 years, and um, it's, it's just a pleasure to be Chickasaw and to be part of this exhibit and this board. Thank you, Margaret. Um, Joanna, would you like to go next? My name is Joanna Underwood Blackburn, and I am a potter and sculptor. And I'm, I also studied graphic design and worked at the tribe for about 15 years for the Chickasaw Nation as a graphic designer and creative developer. Um, and then in 2011, I decided to become a full-time artist, working from home, um, doing freelance and concentrating on my artwork. So um, um, my last few projects have been um, mostly concentrating on sculpture, large um, public art pieces, and still doing my pottery as well, but trying to transition more into sculpting. And I'm um, still doing a little bit of graphic design and also enjoy doing photography and painting. So hopefully with this extra time, I can also add more artwork pieces. Thank you, Joanna. And um, I also wanna add that Joanna has been leading our artist board as the chair position. Um, so we wanna thank her for her leadership on this project. Um, and then, Dan, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Daniel Worcester. I'm a Chickasaw bladesmith. I've been forging blades for 31 years. I was formally trained on how to forge a blade in 1989. I, tradition, the traditional blades is what I started with, traditional knives. And I evolved after three or four years into contemporary, and that's what I'm doing now, contemporary pieces. I try to look at my work from the perspective of others, seeing maybe it can evoke questions from them as far as why each piece was made, why I use this material, but I, I'm 
uh, interested in found materials. I like to use found materials and especially for the show, the pieces I have in the uh, Visual Voices show, they were all um, uh, from found materials and the the evolution we've taken as artists on our board, I think, uh, is tremendous in that uh, each each time I see the other artists, it seems as though they've um, they just broaden their horizons and their and their uh, fields that they're in, so that no artist that I've seen is uh, pigeonholed in any one spot. Whereas we keep looking for other avenues to express our art, art, whatever it may be. And I'm pleased to be on this board and I'm pleased to see how far Visual Voices has come. Thank you, Dan. Um, and then next, Brent, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? So my name is Brent Greenwood. I am also Chickasaw. I'm actually half Chickasaw and half Ponca, and I am a primarily a 2D mixed media artist, and I've been drawing my whole life. And as a painter, I guess you would say I've been painting over um, 20 years professionally, probably closer to 25 now. Uh, I hold a degree in Associates of Fine Arts from the Institute of American Indian Arts. I'm a graduate of Oklahoma City University and Studio Arts, Bachelors of Fine Arts, and currently serve as the Chickasaw Nation's Director of Fine Arts in the Arts and Humanities Division. And two, I just want to echo everyone else's um, sentiments about serving on the board. I feel very blessed and humbled to have been asked by Governor Anna Tubby to help come up with a way to, you know, further our artistic visions through the Chickasaw um, arts. And so I think it's uh, been a blessing for us and a learning experience as well uh, to form this board and to have a lot of say in the direction and control, you know, of what we wanted to share with the art world, you know, to get our Southeastern arts, our Chickasaw arts, out there and you know just raise more awareness and education about what we do as southeastern uh, first american artists and in this case chickasaw contemporary arts so anyway like i said uh as a studio canvas painter easel mixed media artist i just love creating and sharing our narrative and our story with with the people and uh, that's what i try to do throughout my work is share that energy that passion of our arts and culture with everyone, so. Thank you, Brent. And um, some of the things you touched on is a perfect segue into the next discussion question um, is, I'd like for us to talk a little bit about our process of developing this exhibit because it's a really unique structure and that we have an all artist board um, that is been guiding this project. And I'd like for us to share um, some of the reasons why we wanted to create this exhibit and um, what's the need that we wanted to meet and address with this project. Well, I, th I think someone um, mentioned when they were doing the introductions that Governor Anatubby, I think we figured out about 10 years ago uh, was one at one of it's called CSAM Southeastern Art Sale and Market. He wanted to do something to broaden the Chickasaw art, and then the three of you came to Dan and I. Yeah, thankfully, thank you very much. And we talked about it, and we started to have meetings. And uh, so that's how I think we first started out. And so we met once a month for several years, deciding which avenue to take. And Finally, um, Heather Winslow, who is a curator for a new museum, the First American Museum in Oklahoma City, suggested that we do an exhibit, and then we took off from there. Yeah, um, and I, I remember us talking a lot about the issues that we all face um, as artists who draw upon our Southeastern ancestors' work for inspiration. 
Um, I know all of our mediums are very different and our styles are very different from each other, but we all sort of draw upon this knowledge base of Southeastern designs. And I know a lot of us, when we market our work, um, people are really unfamiliar with uh, who the mound building cultures are and what Southeastern art is because there are so many um, stereotypes about Native art and we, our backgrounds don't align with those stereotypes that a lot of people coming to Native art markets are familiar with. And so um, I know that that was something that we discussed a lot and another issue we discussed a lot was the issue of um, breaking into the more mainstream art world um, and not just being um, sort of stuck in the um, native art market world, but presenting our work to in um, museums that exhibit other kinds of art as well. I agree. I think that was initially one of our, um, one of the things that we noticed as artists was that we were having shows here in Oklahoma and markets and we were seeing more and more artists um, come up with doing their version of um, these, our ancient, you know, our ancestors design work um, and seeing kind of a rebirth of, of our culture like coming through art and artists. And I think that um, we could see as we looked around that there was kind of, there was a gap um, in opportunities and knowledge about Southeastern culture and art um, that we could see that people knew about the Southwest, but not so much about the Southeast, which is where the Chickasaws came from. And so we wanted to be able to tell our stories and also share with the world, you know, about our culture, which we could see that um, not many people knew about. So that was also an issue that we were trying to, um, to solve. Yeah, so I was just gonna say, kind of the same, along the same lines, but just from my perspective as a painter, painting the, these designs, iconography, it was something that, um, that definitely inspired me to want to share these, uh, these elements and show how I interpreted those elements with like the here and now in the contemporary sense, because for the time, you know, definitely that was art imitating life. You know, these designs, these elements you saw in the vessels, in the gorgets, you know, just all that was uh, very reflective of the time. And so for today, what I wanted to do was to show how I'm interpreting some of those same elements through my lens, my contemporary eye, and through my narrative, but using that as a basis, as a foundation. So it's very deeply rooted in those designs and motifs, but um, interpreting wind or the flow of rivers or, you know, those elements, the way I see it, but relying on that as a basis. And just, again, when I was putting my, um, my, I would say Chickasaw art, my Southeastern style art in my gallery in the early 2000s, people literally came up to me like, oh, is that Mexican art? <laughs> you know, they really thought, I mean, cause you know, there are some similarities, you know, we did have those trade, routes through the Gulf of Mexico up through, you know, you know, through the um, Mississippi River, Tennessee River. So we did have those trade routes established. And so, you know, there's going to be definite influences. But there again, that was another reason why I felt this exhibit was so important to raise awareness because Southeastern arts were, I mean, there were artists out there and always have been doing um, our art, but I feel like it was um, heavily underrepresented, um, you know, underrepresented in galleries and in that setting. So I think this exhibit was a key exhibit to help us establish ourselves as, as far as like raising awareness and education about Chickasaw art and Southeastern arts. Yeah, I really like that point about education um, and teaching people what Southeastern art is, because I think once they understand our little bit more about our history and about our that um, rich cultural knowledge base then they gain a deeper appreciation for the art and the layers of meaning that we infuse into each piece and many of the artists in the exhibit are working with so um, I think 
that makes it so much easier for artists to be professional working artists. Um, and Dan, did you want to add something? I'd just like to say that, you know, touching on uh, us having five artists and having artists on the board, I think it boils down to really uh, us having the heart, mind, and soul of an artist being put into this exhibit. And I think it really shows and it comes out what we have inside. Yeah, that, Dan, that's a perfect segue into my next question. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was, why was it important for this project to be guided by a board of all Chickasaw artists? Well, I think when I heard um, our curator, um, Manuela Welloff Mann, speak at our first exhibit at the Fred Jones Museum, I didn't realize that most exhibits are done by curators. And so everything you see is through a curator's eyes and they're the one that collect the work and decide what the theme is. And so I personally didn't realize that we were doing something so groundbreaking mm -hmm. uh, when we started out. And so I think what Dan said, it made us really, um, the heart and soul of an artist is in this exhibit. You know, we look to that rather than just putting together works of art. Yeah, I agree. I think our exhibit really broke the mold of how an art exhibit can be put together. And for those unfamiliar with Chickasaw culture um, and Chickasaw art forms, if you can share about some distinctive pieces that you think are good teaching tools about that. One of my pieces that is focusing on a stomp dancer um, and uh, the spirit and the energy behind the painting called The Awakening was something I wanted to capture just to, to share that, that, um, that energy. I wanted this painting to embody that spirit, that feeling that you have and participating in any, anything that's uh, ceremonious um, but from our perspective, you know, through the stomp dance and through the songs, the music. And so I relied on some, you know, again, some motifs and some imagery that um, inspired me. And so anyway, there's di these different elements that I wanted to incorporate into this, to this uh, piece. To me, this speaks about the pride in oneself and a uh, sense of community and sense of place within the culture. I think one thing that... Um to me is I don't think people realize how much research goes into our pieces. And if you hear Dustin Mater speak about his work, you're just fascinated because he has learned so much about our history and our stories and they're so deep in his work and they're all so playful. So it brings children in so that we have that interaction and you get the interest of a younger crowd. And I think that's really important is that um, just the research that has to be done for these pieces. And Josh Henson's another one that's humorous and fun, but yet brings those stories out, different stories that we have. And so I think that's important. And you look at Brenda Kingerly's work Oh my goodness, you know, the beauty of just seeing her work uh, and how she gets it through going to dances, going to stomp dances and taking photos and then interpreting that into a very, very modern um, technique of her work is just stunning. Um, and I think that's what I, I see is so much research, like Joanna's piece is just one of the front runners. Um, of the exhibit, Tyra's piece, her story that goes with that. There is so much research that I don't think people realize artists do for their work. And I think this exhibit brings a lot of that out. Yeah, and I, I especially love the incorporation of the shell uh, carving motifs yes. into 
all different mediums. Um, I know Dustin is actually carving shell in some of his pieces. Mm-hmm. And then I love how Aaron Stock kind of takes those yes. from our shell gorges and um, puts them into her very colorful paintings and um, sort of places them in dreamscapes and different interesting layers in her acrylics. And so I think um, they really come to life that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely think we would be remiss if we did not mention the fact that we also had a project manager to yes. help steer us through this uh, process and help keep us on our toes with you know different deadlines we had to meet with PR with you know educational components because as an artist sometimes you know we just want to create we just want to make the work but there's a there's a balance there that we have to realize you know that there's a business to this too there's uh, deadlines that have to be met uh, mm-hmm. very important to have that in place too Laura Clark was great in helping you know us through these um, these times and you know budgets and all that stuff we have to do a lot of reporting back because, you know, because again, you know, through the uh, vision of our, you know, Governor Anatubby um, in leadership, you know, this, this exhibit was fully funded by the Chickasaw Nation. So uh, we wanted to make sure that we uh, fulfilled our mission and the board and fulfilling the duties to provide a quality exhibit and reach as many venues as we possibly could with the time uh, frame allowed. Yeah, I I agree with with that as well. Um, I think that that's one of the things we we learned so much along the way because we never um, did a project like this before. But definitely having Laura Clark there was um, saved us because we didn't realize how many things needed to be organized and figured out. And and you know we changed and we grew, but I think in the end we um, we accomplished everything we set out to do. What I really hope of as far as this exhibit and <clears throat> myself as an artist, I hope this just encourages future artists to uh, pursue their artwork and if need be, change their style, change their medium they're working in. And if you feel you've reached a roadblock in wherever you're at, uh, just keep on going because each piece you make, I feel, whatever piece of art should be a struggle. It should be a struggle because if it's not, you may be at a place of complacent where you're just happy and you're not pursuing, you're not pushing more. But I do hope this 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 uh, show that we've got encourages young artists, existing artists, and even older artists who uh, may be at a point they say, you know, I'm, I'm just tired. <laughs> well, don't give up. Just keep, keep on going. And uh, I just hope this, uh, this, uh, the, our exhibit just provides inspiration for others. Well, I think too that we need to give recognition because Joanna um, Underwood Blackburn is the one that did the logo. She's the one that put the catalog together did most of the um, graphics in it. I also wanted to acknowledge First Americans Museum as well. They were our co-host and so um, we got a lot of support from them as well. Absolutely. Um, We're really grateful to them being such a supportive partner throughout this entire process and Um, So I just wanted to first um, let people know that we have a website as well, and it's ChickasawArtist.com, and you can explore our work on there. This video um, will live on there as well, and there's also some really great uh, resources for teachers um, that Laura Clark put together um, using interpreting Um, Chickasaw history through uh, the arts that are in this show. And then I wanted to mention again that our catalogs are available for sale as well on our website and um, at the Briscoe Museum gift shop, they will have catalogs available for purchase. Um, And there are many different contributing authors and interesting essays and creative writings 
um, alongside the artworks in the catalog. So it's definitely a beautiful piece to have in your collection. And I just want to thank each one of you again um, for your time and your conversation. I've really enjoyed myself. Um, and it's truly been an honor to work with all of you to create this beautiful exhibit for our people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.